I just thought I'd share you a story about uh, something that happened to me yesterday in Belfast. I use this blog as some type of diary. So in years to come, the kids will also look back on it when I'm not al- around uh, about my faith journey. But anyway, yesterday my daughter went up to Queen's. They were having an open day, so they were having these different lectures. And my eldest daughter has already studied in Queen's, so the the two girls went out, uh, Ellen and Laura. Ellen is buying a property up there at the moment, so uh, maybe Laura will be sharing the house with her next year. And uh, anyway, so I went. I drove uh, Laura up to Belfast on Friday evening. We stayed at my brother's place and uh, they went off and did their open day stuff yesterday and then I was just thinking oh first Friday sorry first Saturday uh, the men's rosary because I usually go to knock for first Saturday men's rosary and I was looking I was I was saying where's the you know the list there's a list that goes out on whatsapp and wherever all the places I was just saying there is no men's rosary in Belfast and so I went to the the grotto there. I said I put a a call out on my channel on WhatsApp saying, look, if anybody wants to join me to pray the rosary, uh, we'll do it at the Our Lady's Grotto there in Belfast. Now, I went, I went before I went to Our Lady's Grotto. I went to Saint Peter's uh, Cathedral. Uh, which is literally 10 minutes walking away. So you go out and up the false road and uh, in and into St. Peter's and they have to their uh, left a little you, a chapel where, where you can have adoration. It's one of these tabernacles you can open. The, they have a kind of a door thing and you can open and have adoration there. I've been up there a good few times during COVID. I remember used to work in Belfast because you know to get out to travel a bit you know my brother had a large room in his house and I could work there so oftentimes I would uh, uh, take a call a conference call going out walking or something to, to get some exercise it was a COVID time was a strange time but anyway I went up to have to get adoration there I went to St. Peter's and you know it's a bit sad uh, I find it sad anyway that most of the times I walk in there, there's nobody around. But, you know, I suppose that is the state of the way things are at the moment. But we had rosary uh, later on at one o'clock in the little grotto there in in uh, in Belfast. And uh, afterwards, we went out for a coffee. Some of the men that came along we went out for a coffee. It, it, kind of a nice, it was a nice afternoon to have the banter and the chat. And one of the men that came out for a coffee, he had a traditional Latin mass missile with him. We were just there talking about the missile, uh, talking about the the mass. As people know, the the newest traditional Latin mass chapel in Ireland, you know, dedicated traditional Latin mass chapel is in Belfast, the Institute of Christ the King, um, uh, uh, Mary Immaculate in Fort William. And they have uh, lately they have restored well they have not restored because it was a presbyterian chapel but they have made the the chapel more uh, accessible at the pri- previously you you had to go through the sides and now they've made a, a central passage in and they've renewed the sanctuary and they're putting altar rails up you know a very very beautiful chapel really a labor of love in belfast beautiful place and uh, a lot of people that are are going to the traditional Latin Mass are getting catechized, you know, trying to understand the Mass. And one thing that with the traditional Latin Mass, if if you are uh, if you follow it, you'll usually get a missal. Now, the Catholic missal, a missal was something that was kind of commonplace uh, before the reform, the Vatican II reforms, because the Mass was in another language many people would have had a Latin and an English or Latin, whatever missile they had to follow along with the Mass. And the Mass, the missile prior to Vatican II was a lot smaller than it is today. It was very compact because it didn't have all of the weekday readings and, the, and the, the cycles of readings. And to be clear, I have no problem with, with the reform of the liturgy 
as it was discussed in the document in the council. But, uh, you know, today there's there is a lot of debate about the about the uh, these reforms and I'm not going to get into them on my channel. But I, I, I like the traditional Latin mass. I like to blog about it. I like to recommend that you visit, go to a traditional Latin mass because it is simply divine. It is, it is a beautiful, simple prayer. And it has made thousands of saints during the life of the church. You know, that form of worship. That is, obviously, it has developed, it has changed over the centuries. But it is a very beautiful um, encounter with Christ. I mean, not just the traditional Latin Mass, but also the other ancient rites the, that you have in the church. If you go to the East to a Greek Catholic Mass or an Orthodox Divine Service, what they call it the Divine Service, it you you you're you're you know it it, it is a very moving experience. It tugs at your heart. It's very beautiful. The sit you get the same encounter in the Holy Sacrifice, the Mass, the traditional Latin Mass. But what I found fascinating anyway was this man he had he had gone out and he had purchased one of these old missiles that that you that you find somewhere it was a 1952 missile okay and I was just there leafing through his missile as we were in the the coffee shop after after the rosary and I couldn't help but just falling on the Easter uh, the Easter Saturday mass that was in the the missile. I have an old missile. It's a pre nineteen, it's a early nineteen fifties missile. This missile I found on a bin when I was doing the Camino Santiago, uh, in two thousand and twenty, two thousand nineteen actually. It was actually before the pandemic. It's it's that long ago. But anyway, I remember finding this missile in a bin in Bayonne in France. And I said, oh, I, I wanted this and I, I, I have kept it since. But there's one thing that I thought which was very interesting about the pre-1955 uh, Easter week was the Easter Vigil Mass, uh, which uh, we had a very strange and interesting experience of that Easter Vigil Mass. A few years ago, we went to a monastic community for that mass and they were celebrating it according to the pre-1955 um missile which cardinal Seurat, when he was prefect of the doctrine or prefect of the dicastery of of worship when cardinal Seurat was then he permitted the use of this missile um and the that mass that that vigil mass has 12 readings or had 12 readings most people don't don't go to it anymore but it had 12 readings now i can understand the council fathers wanting to and i can understand pius the 12th uh, and 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 this 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 uh, movement to try and engage people more with the mass full act of participation which is what they discussed in in the in Second Vatican II, in Sacrosanctum Concilium before that. And I can understand, I can look back, say, a hundred years ago and, and see people going to Mass. Maybe they, they were illiterate. I mean, there were, there were people in my family 50, 60 years ago that could not read, you know, so people that were illiterate. And how would they have experienced the Mass where they can't follow it and then they uh, it's in a language they don't understand what is their experience of of worship there and you can and you can understand okay may, is this really uh, are we engaging with the faithful and so maybe there was good intentions in trying to reform the mass but it didn't kind of work out as as expected in in, in my opinion and and we we turned it into an entertainment session you know, so father has to entertain the audience. So every Sunday, how am I going to entertain these people that are all looking at me as I do the actions and they're being they're spectators at an entertainment session? That, that That's what we have sadly turned the mass into. And if the pa father isn't entertaining, then we'll he doesn't get as many a big of audience whereas another entertaining father he gets a bigger audience you know this is sadly what has happened with the mass 
and we forget that the mass is the praise and worship of our lord jesus christ you know we, we are stepping into a very profoundly divine experience and uh and just on the on the 1955 Easter Saturday Mass that we had a few years ago, what Pope Pius XII allowed was the readings to be said in the vernacular. Now, this is one of the earliest, earliest reforms of, of the Mass was that the readings could be said in the vernacular. And even today, if you go to the SSPX Mass in Mexico, they were... The readings are in the vernacular. So the first reading they say in the vernacular, the gospel they say in Latin and in the vernacular, because this was the way it was said in Mexico before Vatican II. So they continued on with it. I know the SSPX in Ireland, they, they do the mass slightly different. But in Mexico, everybody said the responses, not just the altar boys. Everybody, everybody's saying, and seemingly this is something that they did in, 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 in Mexico before Vatican II which I didn't know. And it makes sense, you know, Latin and Spanish wouldn't have been a million miles apart. And I suppose the people could understand uh, a little bit more, the easier the Latin and say the responses. So you had this full act of participation. But in the 1955, pre-1955 Easter Vigil Mass, you have these 12 readings. And so we went to this Mass with the missile, the, the pre-1955 miss, uh, missile. And I remember during the Mass, I was there with my kids at the time, and uh, so they got 12 readers to say, to, to read the prophecies, the, the, the 12 prophecies that were, 12 readings that were said at the Mass. It, it can be quite long. And, but I, it, and my kids were saying at the time, oh, this was very interesting, Daddy. We never had a mass like this, you know, where you have the 12 different readings and the 12 uh, said in the vernacular so people could follow along. And it was it was a very moving uh, mass at the time. And I, I do encourage people to go to a traditional mat, Latin mass to catechize. You know, I don't recommend this in any way to divide the church and I don't. I'm not here uh, saying don't follow the reforms of Vatican II or go against the Second Vatican II. I'm just saying it's a treasure for the church. The traditional Latin Mass is a treasure for the church. You know, it's if it's helping us in our prayer life, in our sacramental life, in our spiritual life, in our zeal for, for our Lord... It should be nurtured. It should be brought out to the church. If people want to go to it, go to it. If people want to recommend it, recommend it. Without it being a sign of division or or that we're against something. I mean, if today the Pope banned the Greek Catholic Church from celebrating their right, there'd be uproar. He wouldn't do it. He wouldn't even try to do it. And yet, you know, to promote or to foster or blog about what we held for sacred for centuries seemingly is problematic sometimes. I, 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 I can't understand it. You know, what, there's one little note I find very interesting, which is, uh, you know, after you, see, you often see at masses all of these pa- printed paper sheets missalettes that have the readings and stuff and advertisements and and bulletins and so forth you know going into churches and on every mass on a sunday you see them printed out across ireland or or the, the you can get this monthly booklet of readings that you can get posted out to you uh, and in this this new ecological push in the church why not promote the fact that the faithful buy a missile an actual missile with this so that you have one missile that you use all of your life with all of the readings and the right of the mass and so forth you know one missile it seems like in the last 50 years the missile has fallen out of favor in the church i th- there was the one thing i loved in seminary was my missile because we had mass in latin in 
Italian and then Spanish. So we various well Latin, Italian, Spanish, or Latin and Latin and the or the whatever country we were working in, we rotated around Latin, maybe or Polish or Latin or whatever country we were living. In. But we used to. I remember we. Used to, I used to have the 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 missile at the time, and uh, I found it very helpful. You know, to to as you as you went through the 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 different cycles. I do like. I do like the fact of the new lectionary. I do think the new lectionary is, is beautiful. I've nothing against it, uh, and some and some changes are good, but it, it's strange in the last fifty years how the missile has fallen out of favor in in the life of the church. You know, my mother had a missile. So many, so many people in the nineteen sixties and that I remember had missiles. You know, for the mass. There was no problem. People would went to mass with your missile. You know the 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 priest had a missile to celebrate mass, and the faithful they had a missile to follow the mass, and you could use it to catechize on the mass, and so to enter into this great prayer of the church. And yet today we don't we don't have missiles. We have little printed miss uh, uh, of the readings on a Sunday. And I do, and I honestly say to I honestly say to the church, I I honestly believe there has never been a period in the history of the church, when the when the faithful are so badly catechized on what the mass is. I I I would say our the illiterate generation of a hundred years ago, where the priest says, well, maybe these they don't understand the mass that well, maybe they're not catechized, and it's very disconnected, and they're they're praying their rosary and. Uh, and they're not engaging in the mass, and I, I, I dare to say, a hundred years ago, the faithful probably understood the mass better than what the faithful do today. Really, I honestly do, because so many people are so poorly catechized on the mass. It is, it is so sad. It is such a sad situation that we have found ourselves in. Uh, and that's why I do I do encourage people go to a traditional Latin mass and get the catechesis on on the mass on the right of the mass and the different parts of the mass. It is a very beautiful treasure for the church. Bring your kids to it. Experience it. How can you understand the new if you don't understand the old? Even if you've never been to a traditional Latin mass, go to it. I was so impressed when I was working in Singapore. There was one church that offered the traditional Latin Mass in Singapore. I'm, I know there are people in Singapore that listen to my blog, but I was so impressed by that one church. They were the only church that offered the traditional Latin Mass. It was quite a large church and they had a traditional Latin Mass in every seat on every pew. So that when you go to, a, if you went to the traditional Latin Mass there, you didn't need to be looking which missal it was there at every seat. I would love to see in traditional Latin Mass churches, uh, free missiles, uh, so that if you walk in, at least you could you could follow along and maybe, you know, details of the of the different sections so that you could actually you know uh, follow along the mass. I'd just be interesting. It'd be a nice project, but it it is. I think we should connect with the with the beautiful, uh, rich history of our faith. This 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 incredible prayer of the church. Somebody mentioned a comment on my channel saying that the Eucharist is a miracle. You know, that the, the Eucharist isn't a miracle. Because then you put the action of the person that does the miracle at the same level as the miracle. The Eucharist is far deeper than the miracle. You know, it's like... Uh, uh, it's like saying it's like saying that the uh, the person that created the car is the same as the car no no the the car the miracle and the, the person that did the miracle are two different things and what we have with the eucharist is a real encounter with the creator a real heart to heart encounter you know mirac a miracle can be very oh, you know uh, imagine if at every mass the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ manifested itself visibly for everybody you know so everybody could see it it would it, it would be 
yeah, incredible. But God doesn't work on that level in our worship. He wants us to have faith. He wants us to have that encounter of love, which demands faith. It's far deeper than a miracle, in my in my opinion, the, the Eucharist. While there are Eucharistic miracles, the Eucharist on a Sunday is far deeper than you could than a, a miracle. It's it's a um, it's an encounter of love. Anyway, I just thought that this experience of the yesterday at the cafe of talking about the missile, I just thought I blog about it. And and again, I do encourage people to go traditional at mass, but uh, so that pe- you can see the beauty of what the mass is, because oftentimes the sacred can be lost in our worship. And to buy a traditional Latin mass missal, you know they're being reprinted. You can get them in knock. That you can get the the traditional Latin mass missal in knock. Actually, the missal that you have in knock shrine in the bookstore was the same missal that they had in every pew every seat in Singapore where they offered the traditional at mass. It's very beautiful. Very, very beautiful. Very, very, very sacred. Uh, And it is something too. We should never lose in the church. The church would be eternally impoverished if the traditional at mass was ever banned. It's really sad. It would be. But... Again, it, it's a means to an end in the sense that our Lord leaves us this treasure to what? To go out, to be apostles, to be uh, people of mission. You know, we, we, it's, it's not something just to make us feel happy and, and it's to go out and to help those around us, you know, to lead them, to, to lead them, uh, to be the light for them, for Christ. Anyway, God bless you. Take care. Bye-bye.